भाग्यनगर में हूँ हैदराबाद में हूँ हैदराबाद को भाग्यनगर बना करके फिर से विकास की नई वी हैव डिसाइडेड अवर संकल्प इज टू नॉट लेट यू मेक हैदराबाद इस्तानबुल वी विल मेक हैदराबाद भाग्यनगर दैट इज अवर संकल्प दैट इज अवर संकल्प I am at Hyderabad's most iconic landmark, the place you think of the minute you think of Hyderabad. You're probably thinking of the Chaar Minar, which is right behind me. But if the BJP has its way, they want to replace this temple, the Bhagya Lakshmi Temple, as Hyderabad's iconic landmark and not the Chaar Minar. For many, many years now, in fact, for decades now. The Char Minar is almost synonymous with Hyderabad, and in fact, it features on the Telangana emblem as well. I'm sure for many years you've heard many BJP leaders call Hyderabad Bhagya Nagar. In fact, they've gone on to promise that if they come to power in Telangana, they will rename Hyderabad as Bhagya Nagar. There are a few historians who say that Hyderabad was probably called Bhagya Nagar a few centuries ago, although. they have different reasons they have attributed to different stories now the bjp story spins around this temple behind me the bhagya lakshmi temple i want to just show you this is a very small shrine what you see is the makeshift part of the temple it is now being extended further because of deepavali but the actual shrine is a very small one and over the last few decades it has grown in size now the bhagya lakshmi temple has become bjp's cornerstone for Hindutva ideology and communalizing politics here in Telangana, because every time a BJP leader comes to Telangana, be it Prime Minister Modi or even Home Minister Amit Shah, they make sure they visit this temple. Time and again, BJP leaders here in the state also talk about how this temple has been demolished; it has been destroyed by Islamic forces. All of this narrative to make sure that they communalize and polarize the city of Hyderabad. whether that has been successful or not we're not going to get into it for now we'll stick to what the story is the old city of hyderabad in the past has seen many communal clashes but at least for the last 10 years since the formation of telangana there have been no major clashes in hyderabad city now bjp's bid to use bhagya lakshmi temple to communalize the city of hyderabad has been criticized by other parties like the brs and congress but they too somehow have gotten pulled into this entire story we will tell you how in a while from now but let's quickly look at the history of this temple and about bjp's claims that bhagya lakshmi temple existed for many centuries we'll have to go back a little bit in history to understand how this started what is the history of this temple and then we'll come back to how the bjp is using it in current day politics and to give us the background i have with us Yunus who is our Hyderabad bureau chief but also our in-house historian and Yunus has been tracking this issue very closely from before BJP made this a political issue right there is actually no evidence till date to suggest that the temple has existed from uh, you know however long the BJP claims it to be It's the BJP a... says that the temple the bhagya lakshmi temple is as old as char minar no that is obviously not true the char minar is literally the first monument that was constructed in 1591 mm -hmm. to mark the city getting founded so this is the first ever thing that was built and it was very specifically chosen here not for any religious purpose but because of water mm -hmm. hyderabad was built on the southern bank of the musi river right right now let me get to your question about the temple itself first of all there was no temple the founding king mohammad quli qutub shah mm -hmm. again supposedly had a lover by okay. the name bhagmati okay oh, oh. now it says that there was no temple what it says is that bhagmati apparently lived in what is close to the char minar earlier mm -hmm. it says that she lived in a village called chinchalam mm -hmm. story still story right now this is a smaller uh, more lovey dovey angle to this is that but that's not what the bjp yeah, is yeah, talking yeah. about so that's, so they're only it, talking yeah. about the temple so there hmm. is there are two versions of this there is a bhagmati and yeah. there is a bhagya nagar yes. like this there is bhag nagar yes. and bhagya nagar, nagar right so the bhag nagar bhag nagar is what is the actual old name right i don't think in my understanding there's a single person who can ever say to this date hmm. let's let's get into a bit of history anyway since we're already here or probably this might help a lot of people also this however more more importantly is a photo of the charminar from from a book in 1944 right 
is exact charminar the temple the yeah temple. so this is the charminar picture from 1944 mm-hmm. without the actual temple and this is from a this is not even from if you if you look at this picture here it says uh, deccan minarets plate 5 Right, so this is basically a picture from a government published book right. of a lot of monuments in the state. So when did the temple get so built? So what I've been told is that apparently there were four milestone markers called mm-hmm. Hyderabad zero zero mile because mm-hmm. this is the foundation, right? Mm-hmm. The one of the milestone markers apparently became a kind of a small shrine mm-hmm. or something when so. And when did this happen? She says in the sixties. She says when a worker apparently was because. poor workers laborers who were who, who would apparently come from districts mm-hmm. would not be able like if they were pass away while working they would, their families didn't have the money to take them back home right. so they would get buried wherever they died right so that's what she says she says that there was a so lady this started who passed, in 1960s it's she says nobody can recall exactly when but she says somewhere around the 60s period is when apparently one lady because she dies her daughter turns one of the milestone markers into a small mm-hmm. shrine it's in 2013 yeah. there was a court order yeah. asking for expansion of the bhagyalakshmi temple mm-hmm. yes. so that w- basically was a result mm-hmm. of the temple management expanding like yeah. trying to expand and then the mim protested and then went to the court the court basically said no ex- just as it should be mm-hmm. court basically didn't say remove the temple the court didn't said the court just said it should not go beyond wherever it is right No Now, more expansion. No more expansion. That's it. Right. That is the history. So right. history. But also yeah. the fact remains that the temple is encroaching on this morning. The temple is built on one of the pillars, right, of the right. marmara. Now, right. for the, for those of you who don't know, the, all our monuments are built with what we call limestone mortar. Yes. It is much stronger than cement. Right. For as long as you take care of it, mm-hmm. because these structures don't retain water unlike cement. So if you, right. but the problem is if you put cement on it, then it will get spoiled. Right. So the issue here, uh, from an archaeologist perspective, is that. it is a cement structure at the corner right. so inadvertently at some point it is going going to probably damage the monument and uh, and behind is also is also a darga that is exactly on the same minaret basically there is a darga also which is again unauthorized both mm-hmm. according both to the bhagya lakshmi temple and, and the darga, darga yeah. are according, unauthorized yeah, encroachments exactly and right. uh, uh, asi does not allow anything to be built on mm-hmm. any monument yeah and there's a 100 meter radius technically speaking mm-hmm. in which nobody is allowed to build anything to understand the temple is also why the unesco world heritage site eludes the charminar because of that issue so if you were to go by what national news channels have been playing over the last few years this issue of the bhagya lakshmi temple is so important and so polarizing for the people of hyderabad that it has changed the political landscape but i did speak to people here people who've been here for many decades and some of them who started doing business here more recently and for them this is clearly a non issue yes they've heard of the bhagya lakshmi temple before but they all unanimously say that was small in size not too many people used to come for the last 3 to 4 years it has started seeing more footfall it has also started expanding a little bit more during deepavali there is a makeshift structure that comes up but that's taken down right after the festival ends ye jo bhagya nagar bol rahe hai aapne suna tha aapne bachpan mein hyderabad ka naam nahi 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 bada kabhi nahi sune hum ye naam bhagya nagar ha abhi sun rahe hum ye ke bhagya nagar bhagya nagar otherwise uh, we did not heard about this one before acha humko is bare mein malum hi nahi tha ke bhagya nagar isko bolte bolge acha kyunki hamesha se iska naam hyderabad raha We have a vendor with us who has seen uh, the Char Minar and the Bhagya Lakshmi Temple now for a few decades. आपने आप या कब से इधर है? मैं 65 से हूँ. 65 से पहले मैं खाली हूँ. कुकु देखा रखे वाला. फिर बाद में छोटा पत्थर देखा. फिर बाद में ये बनते बनते मंदिर बन गया. नहीं पहले तो नहीं था वो. बिल्कुल एक पत्थर की तरह था वो. फिर बाद में आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ये शकल में आया. अच्छा हम 20 22 साल से देख रहे हैं अच्छा। वैसे वैसे है पहले छोटा था फिर बड़ा हुआ नहीं छोटा बोल तो उतना है वो दिवाली के टाइम में पूरा जमा देते हैं बड़ा बड़ा देखता पहले से मंदिर उतना है और इतना बड़ा कब हुआ ये बड़ा अभी होते रहा है हल्लू 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 और पहले भी ऐसे ही था 10 साल पहले इतने लोग आते थे उतने लोग नहीं आते थे मगर था मंदिर पहले भी तो लोग नहीं आते थे थोड़े बहुत आते थे अब जरा ज्यादा आते हैं हफ्ता इतवार से जुम्मे के दिन ज्यादा आते हैं अच्छा फेस्टिवल रहता ना जुम्मे को ज्यादा आते हैं नहीं नहीं पहले कोई नहीं आते थे यहाँ पर जी अभी तकरीबन एक दो चार साल से लोग ज्यादा आने लगे यहाँ पर और इसका नाम ज्यादा उठने लगा और ना यहाँ पर कोई नहीं आते थे इवन जब छोटी सी टेम्पल थी उस वक्त भी यहाँ पर कोई नहीं आते थे 
बस सुबह के टाइम एक दो जने आके जो भी है अपना वो कर लेते थे फिर तो उसके बाद कभी हम कोई जमाने तक कोई भी यहाँ पर आते हुए नहीं देखे कि बड़े पॉलिटिकल या बड़े लोग जो जैसा अब आ रहे हैं उस वक्त तो कोई नहीं आते थे पिछले सालों में बोले तो अभी पाँच छः साल से ज्यादा जरा लोग आ रहे हैं और दूसरा कुछ भी नहीं नहीं पहले से बोलते है बाग नगर में बोल के अपने को अपना एरिया नहीं है आपको नहीं हाँ। अच्छा ये बीजेपी अभी बोल रहे हैं पहले भाग्यनगर था हाँ, पहले भाग्यनगर इंटरेस्टिंगली देर आर फ्यू अदर स्मॉलर टेम्पल्स अराउंड द चार मीनार शिव मंदिर महादेव मंदिर कॉल्ड इंक्लूडिंग द भाग्य लक्ष्मी मंदिर बट दिंक्रेटिक कल्चर ऑफ हैदराबाद रिमेन्स इन टैक्ट बिकॉज देर आर मुस्लिम वेंडर्स सेलिंग स्टाफ राइट आउटसाइड द टेम्पल एंड देर आर हिंदू वेंडर्स ऑल्सो कंटिन्यू टू डू बिजनेस राइट आउटसाइड चार मीनार and none of them seem to be bothered about this controversy that is clearly political and that is clearly made just for some news channels so the first time bjp used this in politics was a couple of years ago in 2020 ahead of the ghmc that is the local hyderabad municipal corporation elections that was their poll page and it did kind of yield results we don't know if people voted uh, for bjp in unprecedented numbers because of this or because of other factors because bjp does have more appeal in urban pockets than in other areas but the fact is that it's stuck but why make this small shrine this fairly non descript before bjp made it uh, so important so why did that become their poll pitch why did it capture their imagination and their narrative and how in the long run will bjp look to use this is very interesting it kind of falls in their hindu khatre mein hai narrative we've seen them play this out in state after state in some states it has been fairly successful in some other states it's still work in progress so this entire uh, you know in, uh, entire issue of uh, bringing out how cruel certain uh, muslim rulers were falls in bjp's uh, scheme of communal politics but in hyderabad how has this panned out this temple is in sync with the national narrative you know if you look at the ram temple right it's like a it's like a nucleus that they can build and turn it into something more explosive because because like like you also mentioned right the during the 2020 jhmc elections uh, or whoever came you know from the bjp when they came whatever they said and when yogi when yogi adityanath very specifically said why can't the city be called bagan or something to that extent mm-hmm. I think that really that's a nerve for a lot of people because yeah, until now people have sort of made peace with the fact that chalo theek hai mandir hai chhod do so you're saying this demand or this is recent, idea yeah. is from outside yeah, it's, it's, it's not from so you you know Hindus so there, in there, there are some people from the right wing groups who've been calling it bhagyanagar since forever mm. like they've been calling it there are some historians who also have said that it's called mm. bhagyanagar I remember reading in school that it's Bhagyanagar mm-hmm. and it was renamed to Hyderabad mm-hmm. until I actually sat and read the history and then I realized oh that is clearly not the case. But the how much concerned. has it caught on? Uh, I'm not talking just uh, electorally. I'm I'm saying uh, have people socially? started socially have started people uh, started accepting it or talking about not it? Not yet, no. Not okay. not not in the large because see a lot Hyderabad probably is still largely uh, socially more cohesive. Yeah. It's not exactly a city where people you know will. I think you know we see news these days like a uh, muslims not being allowed into a hindu area like yeah. hindu shop or like vice versa whatever you want to call it right yeah. like there is a dichotomy in society mm-hmm. in the sense that yes. it's largely hindu muslim narrative right yahan par i think to that extent in spite of everything nothing much has happened i think yes. unfortunately they have created a narrative big enough mm-hmm. that forces every single politician to come and you know pray at this temple and bjp has centered their politics around this temple like mm-hmm. the now they are like will come and do everything from here yes. so that has i think if you let this grow it might end up you, you can see a little bit of the ram mandir yeah uh, but we all know that bjp plays the long game yeah, exactly. they don't uh, i am saying they, they don't uh, yeah, 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 you know exactly. look at short term electoral gains they look at how it can kind of change the electoral yeah, politics see, right and, now nobody wants to see politically nobody wants to question the bjp because the moment they do that it becomes an anti hindu move right right BRS is more than happy to come pray or do whatever. That's fine. No one's yeah. gonna have problem with the temple, right? In the last one year or so, we've seen uh, political leaders from across parties: Congress, MIM, uh, BRS. All of them talk about uh, Bhagya Lakshmi Temple, and somehow it has become this uh, center of all politicians coming and taking oath 
to either prove something or disprove something. In fact, just a few days ago, a couple of weeks ago in October, a few Congress uh, uh, leaders were suspended. They were not given tickets and then they were suspended for anti-party activities. And they chose this very site in front of the Bhagya Lakshmi temple to come and protest against Raven Reddy, who is the Congress president here in Telangana. Raven Reddy himself came here and took an oath to prove that he had not taken a bribe of 25 crores as alleged by a BJP leader, Itala Rajendra. He, in fact, challenged Itala to come and also take an oath here to prove that he had uh, taken uh, 25 crores as bribe. Itala didn't turn up, of course. And then a few weeks before that, uh, he had also challenged, Raven Reddy had challenged KCR, the chief minister, his son KTR, who's also a minister, and his uh, KCR's daughter Kavita, to all come here and take an oath in the Bhagya Lakshmi temple that they will not give money or uh, liquor as bribes to voters ahead of the Telangana assembly elections. Now, this is straight out of a movie. I am not making this up. Uh, but all this started post that 2020 GHMC post. I mean, it right? was, this is new. That's new. Yeah, that's new. So that you, started happening ah, from when? I think post GHMC only. I remember, I, I believe that 2020 GHMC election uh, is a very important landmark in, yes. the, in this particular aspect because now the temple has become the nucleus of the BJP's larger agenda. I think this time around, surprisingly, we've not seen it. I think but we have time for the election, yeah. of course, so probably we will see something. But right now, we've still not seen anything major yeah. happening. But I'm, I'm assuming that's given some time, uh, Yogi Ji or somebody will come and say something yeah. and go. But the fact that other parties have already taken uh, Bhagya Lakshmi, uh, accepted it, the Bhagya Lakshmi temple, itself, I think in one sense, success shows the success of BJP's uh, yeah, it narrative. Does, it does, it does. BJP's, yeah. In fact, I believe uh, BJP's Bandi Sanjay pushed it quite a bit. And mm -hmm. I think Bandi Sanjay started his Padayatra from here. So right. that I think is also very important to understand right. what they are going. Whether Hyderabad will ever be renamed as Bhaginagar, we don't know, we can't tell you. But this issue of Bhagya Lakshmi temple is clearly here to stay, even though BJP has not been using that rhetoric so far ahead of the assembly elections. But uh, every tourist who comes to Hyderabad will visit the Char Minar. And when you visit the Char Minar, it is impossible to miss the structure of Bhagya Lakshmi temple, which is becoming more and more prominent. This, so the word will spread. The BJP, of course, has ensured that everybody takes the bait. They, every single party is talking about Bhagya Lakshmi Temple in some form or the other. Thank you for watching this episode. We'll come back to you with more issues, more controversies that people here in Hyderabad are talking about. And if you like our reporting, if you like our coverage, and if you like what we do, then do support us because we can cover such issues uh, that take a lot of time, resources, money, only because of our subscribers. And if you want us to continue doing more such work, become a subscriber of the News Minute. But most importantly, today, make sure you contribute to News Laundry and the News Minute Joint Election Fund. We have presence across the five election-bound states, that is Mizoram, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and of course, Telangana. And we are the only people, the only set of journalists who are bringing you unbiased, unsponsored reportage across the five states. Thank you for watching. News Laundry, the News Minute. News Laundry, the News Minute. News Laundry and the News Minute are coming together. Saath ha rahe hai. Five states, two independent media organizations and one team. So log on to newslaundry.com. Contribute to the News Minute and News Laundry Election Fund. Joint Election Fund. TNM, NL. Joint Election Fund. To humara sahiyog kare. Contribute now. Because we are stronger together. Kyunki saath saath milkar hi hum sab majboot honge. Kyunki saage apa majboot resa. Kalisi unte ne balanga unta. We're stronger together. And we're even stronger with you.